Which Florida Gators will be the most important in 2022? Find out here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Happy Monday, everybody. I am Brandon Olson. You can find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Whole Nine Sports and find that on YouTube and my written work with GiantsCountryOfSI.com. I say I like, subscribe, comment, review. Is what it is. You get the gist by now, but I'm going to do it for the newbies. So um, today we are talking about which Florida Gators will be the most important. I'm ranking who I think are going to be the top six in terms of importance. Um, and uh, shockingly enough, first up is Anthony Richardson, which pretty, pretty obvious at that point, you know, starting quarterback instantly puts you number one, even if you're a bad starting QB instantly puts you at number one in terms of importance, unless you're on an option team, like you're on Navy or whatever, then yeah, you can get away with not being the most important player on the team. But we're not talking about Navy here. We're talking about the University of Florida. And so Anthony Richardson is easily the number one most important player on this team. Not only because he is the starting quarterback, that's, yeah, but also that he is arguably going to become the best player on the team. So I think you have to take that into account, of course, especially when you say, well, he might be the best player on the team by the end of the season, and he's playing the most important position in football. So it makes a lot of sense. But also that the offense will be so reliant on him outside of just being the quarterback. You know, it's not going to be just when you think of why the quarterback is so important. It's like because if you have a bad quarterback, your receivers, your tight ends, everybody else is relatively useless uh, because if you have a bad quarterback, he can't, the, he can't get the ball to the receivers. So on top of just being a quarterback where it's like Anthony Richardson has to get the ball to any receiver you can name on this team, any pass catcher you can name on this team, he still has to re- make the right read and get the ball to them. But also even on top of that, Anthony Richardson's running ability is going to be a key focal point of this offense where, you know, if, if there was – a less athletic quarterback, we wouldn't see as much option as we're going to see as, as many QB draws, QB power, whatever it might be. We wouldn't see as much of that if we didn't have a quarterback specifically like Anthony Richardson, not just mobile, but big, strong, fast, and just generally athletic. If we don't have a quarterback like that, we don't see the offense that we're going to see this year. So I think that's also a big part where, Florida's training or practicing for this. If Anthony Richardson is an Anthony Richardson, then it's way more difficult. And also you look at the drop-off from Anthony Richardson to Jack Miller the third or any other quarterback. If you're a big Jalen Kitna guy, which I know quite a few people are, then so be it. But uh, Anthony Richardson is obviously just miles ahead of them right now. I mean, we, we talk about Jack Miller the third came in to compete with Anthony Richardson. And while that is true, um, through spring ball wasn't much of a competition. Uh, that was, yeah, that was that was a, a molly whopping over there. And so I think it's hard to go. Well, there's not significant drop off just based on what we've seen, and they pretty much go head to head. The second most important player on this Gators team for 2022, I think it's Brandon Cox Jr. Um, I was torn between him and number three, who we'll get to, but I I went with Brandon Cox Jr. just because. Not only does he have the value of the pass rush, because I'll tell you this, the next player also has the value of the pass rush. So you could talk about the value of the pass rush and how if you can disrupt a quarterback's game, 
you can completely disrupt that offense and demolish that offense, which is very correct. You know, you often hear about what are ways to beat Tom Brady? What are ways to beat Peyton Manning? And it's hide your pressure, but blitz and bring pressure and hit home. And that's kind of what we're talking about here with Brandon Cox Jr. It's like he has to hit home and when, which he will, if he tries his artist, he will. Then Brandon Cox Jr. Easily second most important player on this team at that point. But also with Brenton Cox Jr., you have to talk about the defensive scheme because we've spoken so much about creepers and sim pressure. And briefly, creepers is when you still rush four, but you drop a, def- a traditional defensive lineman and you send a non-traditional pass rusher like a linebacker that's off ball. Uh, sim pressure, you show blitz, but you only rush four and drop everybody else back. Florida defense under Patrick Tony going to do that quite a bit. But with Brenton Cox Jr., it's like, does he change the defensive scheme or does he limit the defensive scheme or does the defensive scheme limit him? Because you talk about, will he be used as just a pass rusher and the other defensive linemen are kind of up for grabs as to dropping back in, into coverage because you want to have Brenton Cox Jr. rushing the passer every single time you can? Or does he get used as a drop man? But in that case he's not rushing the passer as often as he is, and you're not using him to his best ability. So I think that makes him the second most important because you look at him and the defense will have to kind of, again, either be limited by him or limit him probably. And we're going to talk about that more before the season because it's something that's very interesting and I want to look into at least. But that's for another day. We're about to talk about numbers three and four on the most important Gators for 2022. But first, a quick word from LinkedIn, because as the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the people you want to interview faster and for free. If you've never used LinkedIn Jobs before, I highly recommend it. That's how I got my last job before lockdown, which I loved, but I like this more. With simple tools like screening questions, it makes it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. So why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one, oh no, on the field and in your heart and in delivering quality leads, quality hires versus leading competitors. Nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn jobs every week. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks again for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. We're talking about the third and fourth most important Florida Gators for the 2022 season. And number three, like I've promised, is another pass rusher. And it is Gravon Dexter, which I apologize for saying his name improperly so wrong I'm, apparently it's Gervon um I always thought it was Gervon I've heard everybody call him Gervon as well uh and he's never corrected people that I've seen but Gervon um I mean again you bring up the value of the pass rush it can completely disrupt and dismantle an opposing offense and and that can't be that can't even be talked about enough and also with Gervon Dexter you talk about his ability as a run defender, because Brandon Cox Jr., who is number two, is also an incredible run defender. But Gervon Dexter, his run defense is kind of more important than Brenton Cox Jr.'s because Dexter is in that middle of the line. So Brenton Cox Jr., he only has to about worries. He also has to worry about runs to his side and runs towards the middle are kind of the range where you expect him to make that play. If he could make a backside tackle on the other side, or if he could chase down and make that tackle, wonderful. But you expect him to make the tackles on his side and towards the middle, you expect him to be in play there. Ravon Dexter, on the other hand, is the defensive tackle where he's more towards the middle of the line. So you kind of you kind of want him to be in play for every rushing attack. You want him to be able to stop, whether it's in the middle or on either side of the tackle. So I think that's important also where Yes, uh, his, his importance as a pass rusher cannot be understated, but as a run defender, I think that's more important for Gervon Dexter, and that, that's why that's one of the reasons he's number three. But I think you also have to talk about the lack of depth behind him that brings him up to number three because a lot of people will look at a defensive tackle and say, you can't say he's the third most important player. 
but a lot of people will look at this Florida Gators team. And I know that, you know, we've talked about it a lot on this show and, and a lot of the diehard fans know it. And a lot of the very, very into it fans like year round know who it is. But a lot of team, a lot of people, a lot of Gators fans even that aren't as in depth. If you ask them who is Gravon Dexter's backup, they're not going to know. And, and that's kind of an important thing where the lack of depth behind him staggering uh, because you can't even say the second most talked about Gators defensive tackle right now is Desmond Watson because he's got all that hype around him. He is a massive human being and people think that his ceiling is very high, which it very well could be. Uh, and then he's the second most talked about defensive tackle, but is he the second best? I don't think so. But even on top of that, can he play Gravon Dexter's role? Because the answer is no. He hasn't. We've, we've seen Desmond Watson play. We've, we saw him every time we've seen him. He has not done what Gravon Dexter can do, which is, in his defense, very rare. But behind him, Chris McClellan is probably the second best pass rushing defensive tackle. Or you could talk about Tyreek Sapp as a name that we're going to talk about, maybe Justice Boone. But even then, they're more the Zachary Carter DND tackle type where Gervon Dexter is the D tackle who could play the zero or one tech and could play the three tech. He could probably play the five a little bit, but you shouldn't really ask him to do that. And so the people behind Gervon Dexter, not super promising, is, is my point. And, and that's why that, that importance is there. But also, when you look at the defense, there's quite a few smaller linebackers on the team. You know, you look at DeWan Black, you look at Scooby Williams, they're, they're not they're not Ventra Miller. Like, like they don't look as big. They're not as stout against the run. So the defensive tackles up front, they need to eat up space so that these linebackers can make the plays because getting off blocks is probably going to be a little bit of an issue for them. So defensive linemen, that's your job to hold them off. And the fourth most important player that I have here is Jason Marshall Jr. He is likely the Florida Gators cornerback one going into the season, almost definitely the hype around him right now is just meteoric. Like it, it is wild. The amount of hype around Jason Marshall Jr. right now. And look, I, I think it's deserved. I think he's incredible. Um, so that there's nothing taken away from that. It's just, it's wild to see. Um, and I, I think when you look at this Patrick Tony scheme, yeah, you're going to see a good amount of zone, but you're also going to see, quite a bit of press man. So I think when Jason Marshall Jr., if, if, if you're taking, again, in this in this scenario, we're talking about Jason Marshall Jr. as corner one. He, he is the guy that this Gator staff goes, he's our top corner. He's the guy. So we're going to shadow him. And if, if he's shadowing the top receiver on another team and you see him play press man often, that, that's, that's kind of putting him on an island there and having that faith in him. But if he does not get the job done, that's just just death for this team. That's what I'm saying. If Jason Marshall Jr. does not do his job adequately, then, then this team is in for it. Um, and so I think the importance of Jason Marshall Jr. in this defense, I, I think it's higher than people realize, or whoever you want to say is corner one, it will likely be Jason Marshall Jr. Obviously, we know I, lo- I love other corners on this team as well. Um, but corner one will probably be Jason Marshall Jr. And I don't think that Marshall will rotate as often as other corners where we talk about uh, Avery Helm. We talk about Jalen Kimber. We talk about Jaden Hill. We talk about Devin Moore. We talk about everybody in that corner room because every fan wants a different starting duo and a different nickel corner. Every every fan has a different opinion of it, which is great because that's kind of going to show like there's a lot of talent in this Gator secondary right now where everybody wants everyone to play because it's not like we're looking at the linebackers from last year and we're like, just play Taron Hopper. Like this team is just not that good. Just play to one black. Like the linebackers are just so frustrating. This is not that kind of situation. This is everybody is pounding the table for a different corner set. Like personally, I've been saying Jason Marshall Jr. and Avery Helm would be my guys on the outside. That's just what it should be. Will it be? I have no idea. That's what I think it should be, but I don't think Jason Marshall Jr. will rotate as much as the other corners because everybody loves the other corners as well. 
but we think that they'll rotate in and out, and I don't think that happens as much with Jason Marshall Jr. We're about to take a look at the number five and six most important Florida Gators for the 2022 season, but first, a quick word from our sponsors. To wrap up today's show, we are still talking about the top or the most important Florida Gators for the 2022 season, and... We're, we're flipping back to the offensive side of the ball. We haven't been there since number one. We're at number five now. We've gone, just, just to recap, Anthony Richardson was number one. Brandon Cox Jr. was number two. Ravon Dexter was number three. Jason Marshall Jr. is number four. And number five, Richard Garage. Um, and I, I realize that I'm talking about an offensive lineman here, and it's not Osiris Torrance. And I... Um, calm down. Um, I'm not saying that Osiris Torrance is not the best offensive tackle on the uh, best offensive lineman on the Gators, but he's not an offensive tackle, and that kind of hurts his value in terms of importance. Is he still the best offensive lineman? I think easily. That, that's that. I got a message today that someone who is, from what I know, very strict on their grading and their grading Florida Gators players. And they were like Osiris. Uh, they were like Osiris Torrance, starter quality, like at the NFL. Like he's he's a monster, is what he called him. And I was just like, that's that's all the validation I need at that point. But at the same time, he's still a guard. And if a guard is amazing, that's the argument with Quentin Nelson. Why maybe he shouldn't have been drafted as high as he was, because a guard can only contribute so much. They can only take over a game so much. But also with a guard you can kind of mask any any issues they might have. So I, I think that takes away the value. But looking at tackle, it's Richard Garage is going to be out wide a lot with these elite SEC pass rushers and edge defenders. And and there's just so much talent along the defensive line in the SEC right now where I don't think you could look at any tackle and say he's not one of the more important players on the team. Like, like I, I think you could look at any starting offensive tackle in, on any team in the SEC, and you can say they're one of the top 10 players. Like, like they're top 10 players on the team in terms of importance, whether or not they're good or bad. Their performance will drastically change or drastically impact the performance of this entire team. Um, and, and so I think you can't go wrong with that. So Richard Garage is a reason there, not just for his ability as a pass protector, but also when we're looking at a leadership standpoint, he's, he's clearly taken on uh, a bit more of a leadership role. He was at media days and it was fun to see because watching him you could kind of tell that, uh, that he's not used to being a, a focal point of an interview or a press conference where people are asking him questions. And he was like a little uncomfortable looking like not, not in a weird way, but he was just like not used to it. And you could tell, um, but it's cool to watch him grow because he's taking on that leadership role. He's a veteran offensive lineman on this team. He's been here for quite some time now and he's kind of leading the way for the rest of this offensive line group, as well as being the blindside blocker for the starting quarterback, and that cannot be overstated. And his ability to operate in the wide zone is so important, especially for a team that will probably run quite a bit to the left. Uh, we'll see that from Richard Garage will be the one leading the way. And the sixth most important player on the Florida Gators 2022 team, Trey Dean the third is what I got here, safety. And here's the thing. I have been very open about me saying Rashad Torrance II is the best safety in college football. He's a, he was robbed last year of his all-whatever accolades. Should have been on there. Um, and, it, it, yeah, I just I think that was a sham, and he's been robbed again for the all-SEC teams. But that is not to take a single thing away from Trady. Do I think Trady is the better Florida Gators safety? No, but guess what? I think in this defense, Trey Dean will be asked to do so many things that he will be the more important and more impactful safety on this team. I think Rashad Torrance II, you know, clamping down the deep middle, the center field, whatever you want to call it, I think that cannot be overstated. But I think Trey Dean will be asked to mess around with the line of scrimmage more in the slot as a box linebacker, like a small money backer. And we asked to work so much around this defense. MBS had take on so many roles where you look at Trey Dean, you look at his size, you look at his athleticism, you look at what he can be. And he is one of the higher ceiling players in college football right now, higher ceiling safeties in college football right now, where 
at his best, he could probably erase a tight end from an offense, which is big because, I mean, you got Georgia, South Carolina, all these teams are starting to add high talent, high caliber tight ends. Having someone who could erase them like Trey Dean is a very important thing, and he might be asked to do that. He might be asked to play in a spy if there's a very mobile quarterback. He's going to be asked to do so much that I think his importance is way higher than people even realize at this point. And we're going to talk more about his role in this defense and what we could see. But again, that's for another day. Thanks for making Lock Thank you. It's your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free where listen to the podcast. We'll be back tomorrow with John Garcia to talk Florida Gators recruiting. And man, do we got a lot to talk about. Now make your second listen to Lock SEC hosted by Chris Gordy of Sports 790. Just amazing interviews all the time. And, and I kind of hate him for it. Very jealous. Uh, but go check them out. He had Anthony Richardson for an interview. So there's that for Locked On Gators. I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Whole Nine Sports and on Whole Nine Sports on YouTube. And find my written work with Giants Country FSI.com. And I'll see you all tomorrow.